So let's explore the so-called pole in the barn paradox, where we have a pole that, from one perspective, is moving quickly to the right. There's the speed v, and it's going to enter a barn with two doors, a door here on the left and a door here on the right. So it's going to enter here, and then it's going to exit here. And so the reason why it's moving is because there's a... It doesn't matter. We can, usually it's, it's, it's cast in terms of a runner running with the, with the, with the pole and running very fast. Um, so this is one perspective. This is a pers the, the perspective here is that the barn is not moving and the pole is moving, but we can look at this from the perspective in which uh, you have a reference frame that's moving with the pole, and so it would be stationary with respect to that perspective, and the barn would therefore be moving to the left. But let's look at this on the space-time diagram from the perspective that the barn is stationary. So here's X and here's T. And let's put the barn at some location uh, here, say. So here's the barn and uh, the here is the barn left door and here is the barn right door. And from this perspective, the barn is just sitting there. So the left end of the barn on the space-time diagram just travels upward because it's not moving in space. And the same is true of the right end of the barn. It's just sitting there. And so on the space-time diagram, that location just moves upward, i.e. it's not moving in the x direction. It moves through time only. So it looks like that. And we imagine that the pole is uh, longer than the barn, but because of relativity, the motion of the pole makes the length contract, and we're going to imagine that it contracts just enough, we'll, we'll move exactly at the speed that we need to move at, such that the pole fits at some moment in time in the in the barn. Um, so that means that let's draw the pole in blue. So at some moment in time, let's say at t equals zero, this will be the left end of the pole, and this will be the right end of the pole. And so I want I want to draw these. Well, they have to be, this is the time axis, so it has to tilt, not 45, but a little bit upwards, so it tilts maybe like that. So that's the front end of the barn. And then this is the back end, it has to be parallel to that. So that's the back end of the rod, and that's how the back end and the front end of the, of the rod or the pole move on the space-time diagram. So, uh, let's see. There is a point when the front end of the, the pole reaches the barn. So it reaches the left end of the barn. So the left end of the barn is here, and here is the pole. So here is where the pole, uh, the right end of the pole, so PR, reaches uh, <clears throat> the uh, left end of the barn. And uh, at that same time, so I'm going to move horizontally, I can find uh, where the uh, left end of the pole is. It's right here. Okay, so the pole is, uh, uh, this is P left. And at that moment in time, the pole is right here, and then the pole, uh, of course, here we have, right, 
the front end of the pole is inside the barn here, and eventually it reaches uh, the back end of the barn, and at that moment, the back end of the pole is exactly inside, and so here it is right here, and then later on, we'll have, here is the back end of the uh, pole, so P left, <clears throat> reaching the um, back end of the, the barn, the right end of the barn, and of course the, f the front end of the pole, P right, is there. And so the pole enters and exits, so there is a moment in time when both, uh, when, the, where the, when the pole is entirely inside the barn. Now that's not going to be the case from the perspective of the uh, of an observer that's moving with speed v, right, from that perspective, it's the barn that's moving uh, <clears throat> to the left, and from that perspective, it's the barn that's contracted. And so the pole certainly isn't going to fit inside the barn, but the point is, that doesn't matter. What matters is that if the pole front end enters and the door opens, and then when the front end reaches the back end, the door opens, and the door here closes only after the back end of the pole comes in, and this door closes only after the back end exits, then there's no collision from one perspective. That must be true from the other perspective as well. And so we're going to see that. So let's uh, look at this from the perspective of the moving um, observer, right, so the, from the x-bar, t-bar perspective, and from this perspective we have, um, so these are parallel to the t-bar axis, and uh, these are t, and these are t-bar, and so uh, we want a tilt that's greater than 45 degrees, we want it to be like that, so we're going to tilt maybe like that. Tilt like that. We really want this angle here to be the same as the angle here. Um, that looks about right. So um, let's continue to bend in the same way. And Oops, I'm making a, kind of making a mess here, but let's see what we can do. Things are kind of on top of each other, but um, so these are slices of simultaneity from the x-bar, t-bar perspective. And now we can explore the sequence of events. So uh, let's look at when the front end of the pole enters the barn. So here's the front end of the pole entering the barn then at that moment in time, the back end of the pole is here. So front end and back end, so maybe we can... So this is when the front end enters the barn. Clearly the, um, the back end is at some distance from the barn. Then we can look at, uh, let's see, front end. Well, here we have the front end reaching the back door. Uh, and then at that same moment in time, the back end is here. So here we have front end. Uh, 
bleaches back in the barn from the perspective of the moving observer of course it's uh, the back end of the barn that comes and meets the front end of the, of the pole um, but we, what we see is that the, the back end of the pole that point is removed from is still not in uh, the barn because this is the left door of the barn and so the back end of the pole is not in there so there's a moment in time when the front end is about to exit the barn but the back end of the pole is not in so there's no moment in which the pole entirely fits inside the barn doesn't matter but we still have the same features of the of these events which is there's no there's no event here that involves collision between the pole and the barn so the door here opens and the uh, pole starts to move away from the barn part of it is uh, still inside the barn um, and so here is when the back end of the pole enters the barn and uh, right after that happens the door closes and, but where is the front end um, it's over here because this is a slice of simultaneity at that moment from the moving perspective this is the front end of the barn of course it's outside and this door is still open um, and then so here we have the back end enters barn and then we get the back end is inside the barn here and then the back end uh, reaches the right end of the barn at this location and so we see that this is where the front end is so um, we can say back uh, of rod we should say left end left end of the rod uh, exits barn and uh, the front end of course is outside so these are the same events the sequence what's, what's simultaneous here is uh, is different but none of these events involve collision so there's no contradiction with the physics